Hi, welcome to the Beit Midrash at the Conservative Yeshiva in Jerusalem. Uh, my name is Nolan Leibovitz. I'm the rabbinic intern at Sinai Temple, and this is uh, my class, Season of Strength, connecting the Jewish strength uh, that's associated with Hanukkah to the Jewish strength associated with the Chag of Purim. And um, uh, it's my pleasure to be sitting here today with uh, my teacher and uh, the director of the Conservative Yeshiva, Rabbi Joe Levy. Uh, thank you very much for for being here. It's a real pleasure. So, um, uh, what did you bring for us today? So we're looking at uh, a, a source from uh, Masechet Arachim that deals with the question of when we say Halal, under what circumstances, or what times during the year we say Halal. The Mishnah begins by listing all the different occasions when we say when we say Halal, but we're right in the middle of a sukkah that's discussing maybe a comparison between Hanukkah and Purim. That's where we're going to jump in. Everybody should have a, uh, a link to a source sheet uh, very close to wherever you found the link to this video uh, with the uh, page from uh, the uh, Babylonian Talmud, Arachin, page 10b. So just to, just to go back a tiny bit, just to give you a sense of where we're holding, um, the, uh, the Talmud has just said that with Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, they, both of those festivals fulfill two requirements for saying Hallel. Um, they're both Chagim, and they both have prohibitions on work. Those are two kind of core conditions for, for saying Hallel, according to the Gemara at that point. And then they say, well, how come we don't say Hallel on those two occasions? And the answer that's given is to do with the particularly somber nature of uh, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. You know, the uh, life and death is hanging over us, and therefore it's an inappropriate time to be singing and saying Hallel and celebrating. Um, then the Gemara goes on, the, the section which we're about to read, um, um, uh, it's concerning uh, Hanukkah. V'ha Hanukkah, v'lo hachi, v'lo hachi, v'kamar. Well, what about Hanukkah, which doesn't fulfill either of those requirements? It's not formally a Chag. There's no, um, there's no um, work prohibition. And yet we do say uh, the, uh, the Halal around Hanukkah. And the answer the Gemara gives there is Mishum Nisa. Because of the specifically miraculous nature of Hanukkah, therefore that is an appropriate time for us to, to say Halal. And we do say Halal right, way through, right, the, right the way through Hanukkah. Then we get into the section around, uh, around Purim. Purim de Ikani Salema. So regarding Purim, there is a miracle at Purim time. It specifically is the celebration uh, of, of Purim, the salvation of the Jewish people. So why don't we say Hallel at Purim? And it's on that that there are a whole bunch of different answers to the question, why is there no, um, why is there no Hallel at Purim time? Amar Rabbi Yitzchak, Lefi she'ein omrim shira al nes shebechutz la'aretz. Because we don't say uh, a song, Hallel, on a miracle that occurred outside the Holy Land. So the Purim story is a story that's located outside the, the land of Israel. It's, uh, it's, 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 lo it's located in Persia. And uh, despite the fact the children of Israel were destined to die, it was a terribly scary time, and there was a miracle, and that miracle saved the Jewish people. Um, a, a miracle outside the land is not a miracle that we can, uh, we can sanctify with prayer. There's some difference between a miracle that's occurring inside the land of Israel, and a miracle that's occurring outside the land of Israel. And the Gemara immediately asks, well, Rav, uh, in the name of Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak, that doesn't make any sense. What about um, the, the Exodus from Egypt? The Exodus from Egypt is quintessentially the miracle of the salvation of the Jewish people, and it's outside the land of Israel. So how can we celebrate that ever with Halal, I suppose that's, it doesn't say explicitly, but that seems to be a reference to Pesach. Like, how can, we, how can we be celebrating the salvation of the Jewish people outside the land of Israel, which takes place in the Pesach story, um, um, when, uh, when we seem to have established a principle that, um, that all miracles that are celebrated by Halal have to be taking place in the land of Israel. So the first answer that's given, Kedatanya, Ad Shalom Nechnesu Yisrael La'aretz, there's a difference between miracles that occurred before the original time when the Jewish people 
the Israelites entered the land of, of, of Canaan. Um, what yeah, after the Exodus from Israel. After the Exodus. So um, what, after that entry, entry into the land, the 40 years of wandering in the desert and the ultimately entering into the land, it's as if something shifts then. Uh, after that point, once, once the uh, Israelites have entered the land, um, from then on, were they to be expelled from the land, you wouldn't be able to celebrate miracles occurring outside the land of Canaan. But, um, but before that point, before that juncture the, the, of entering the land, um, then uh, we, could, we, could, we could say halal, and we do indeed say halal, halal on the exodus from Egypt and the splitting of the sea and those miracles that saved the, uh, the Israelites. Um, so, uh, so it's getting more complicated. We thought it was just an inside the land, outside the land issue, but no, there's also a temporal element. There's an, there's an element of things that happened before and after the original entry of the Israelites into the land of, into the land of Canaan. So maybe we'll just give the last couple of explanations and then maybe reflect on some of the, uh, some of the ideas that are being thrown up here. So um, Rav Nachman says, Amar Rav Nachman, um, uh, Kriyata Zohi uh, uh, Halila. Um, so Rav Nachman claims that um, the, um, the, uh, at Purim time, the reading of the Megillah, as it were, replaces Halal. And... Um, and um, that would be an explanation for why Halal is not said at Purim. That would be kind of a, a totally different explanation. We're already celebrating in some really, you know, really serious way, uh, in some happy way, the, uh, the miracle that took place. But we don't need to do it through Halal because we're busy doing it, as it were, through, um, through the reading of the Megillah. And that, ca that comes and says, actually, we don't need the more complicated explanations that went beforehand. It's as if we are saying Halal um, on Purim. Um, it's just that it's a halal which is done through, uh, through the text of the Megillah as opposed to a halal which is done through the text of the halal itself. And then Rava, final voice in this, in this little um, interchange, comes and says, Bishlam hatam um, halalu avdei adunai v'lo avdei paro. Hacha halalu avdei adunai v'lo avdei achashverosh. Akati avdei achashverosh ana. So at Pesach time, we are, we're, we're happy to say, Praise the servants of the Lord, but not the servants of Pharaoh. Like that exodus really shifts us from a position of being the servants of Pharaoh to the servants of God. And therefore, some of the liturgy of the, of the Hallel is entirely appropriate. We are serving God and praising God because we've shifted from being under the authority of Pharaoh to being under the authority of, of Hashem. But, um, but here... Um, um, it's inappropriate in the case of Purim it doesn't make sense for us to think of ourselves as having had our, our, um, our master transferred from, from being servants of God to being, to being serv uh, uh, from being servants of Achashverosh to being servants of God because at the very end of the story we are still in diaspora that there hasn't been a the miraculous shift has, sh has saved the Jewish people from destruction but at the very beginning of the story of Purim, we are under the authority of non-Jewish uh, uh, um, kings. And at the end of the story, we're still alive, but we're still under the authority of non-Jewish kings. And therefore, it's inappropriate for us to be singing Hallel. That's, a, that's another completely different take on the question of, of why Hallel is inappropriate at Purim time. And that's, uh, th those questions, I think, that, that, that really is saying something deep about the nature of Hallel and what we're really celebrating at Hallel time. I want to use that last point, that last reason by Rava. Yeah. Um, he quotes uh, part of Psalm 113, which we say um, as part of the uh, the first paragraph. Yeah. The first paragraph that we say um, that we say in Hallel. As soon as we say the blessing, right? Baruch uh, Adonai, Likro Hallel, to read the the Hallel, um, we get to the first line, Hallelujah, Hallu Avdei Adonai, Hallu Et Shem Adonai. Praise the Lord, sing praises, you servants of the Lord. I can't help but notice that the, the irony here is that Rava says that these words cannot be spoken because at the end of Purim we're still in diaspora. We're still servants of Achashverosh, we're not actually servants of God. And yet the great irony is we're sitting here speaking in English, right? Reading a Talmud that was written in the diaspora. And it seems like this is almost an inherent dig that the... Miracle, the nest that occurs in, in the story of Purim, 
outside of the land of Israel is somehow not of the same stature. There's a scary part to, to Rava's statement when Rava says, um, you know, at the end of the story, we're still servants of Achash Verosh. That's a, that's a scary idea. We were saved from the uh, from the terrible uh, lot, potential loss of uh, and destruction in the Purim story, but at the end of the story, we're still where we where we began. And uh, there's something cyclic and somewhat depressing about um, about Jewish life in diaspora. You're still vulnerable. Jewish, the vulnerability is there at the end, as it was at the beginning, and that's why we can't sing the psalm. Even though that might be a place of great cultural richness. Mm -hmm. Um, even though the, you know, the, the Bavli is written in Bavel and it's, uh, right. you know, the, uh, or, or you know, some of the, the, the main centers of Jewish intellectual life now are Jerusalem and America. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, are we, are we really sad when Jews uh, live in, 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 in the United States with, with all the, uh, the riches that that entails in terms of Jewish culture, not just in terms of uh, material life? But Rabbi says, yes, there's an issue about the Jews living in diaspora which is to do with authority. We can't truly, as it were, be servants of God in the diaspora um, because we're also serving other masters. You know, the uh, Jewish diaspora in, in Europe wasn't one appalling you know, 2,000 years of being abused year after year after year. There were periods when, it was ex when, it, when, when Jewish life flourished. But Jewish life flourished and then it ended. And uh, on the whim of a non-Jew, um, um, we were expelled or persecuted, and that's um, that vulnerability was built into the nature of diaspora. And I, I think you know, even now in Europe, there's a there's a kind of waiting. You're kind of you know, when's the next, when is the next um, uh, pogrom going to come? Even in periods when life is good. So that's the, that's the kind of negative spin. Right. But I think though the 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 difference, or I see the difference today than than the in the sugya. The difference is that there's kind of a categorization that today, I would say, later on in the hollow, when we say, Ana Adonai Hoshiana, Ana Adonai Hatzlichana, I think in many ways by spending the year here in Jerusalem, I think Israel is very much strengthened through communities like the American community. And I, I have no doubt that the American community is strengthened, the American Jewish community and the American community in general is strengthened by the presence of the state of Israel in the world today. Okay. And both of these, so, so to say Hanukkah is one side, Purim is another, almost today I think the power is by bringing them together and by saying the miracles that happen here on account of Jewish strength and the miracles that happen in the diaspora on account of Jewish strength can't be seen as independent. They have to be seen standing side by side, so that we strengthen one another. So that we're not saying, Ana Adonai Hoshiana, Ana Adonai Hatzlichana, because in today's world, we Hoshia and Hatzlicha one another. Right. Look, America is, um, is absolutely unique in Jewish history. Uh, uh, it, in America, Jews really do feel that they belong in a very, very deep way. Uh, you know, maybe, you know, my experience of North American Jewry is limited, but um, I've never been to a place where, where Jews have felt um, that they are genuinely at home um, um, as much as the Jews feel in North America. And because of the structure of the country as being a country that, that did accept immigrants from many different places, um, I think Jews are right to feel that this country is theirs in a very deep way. And... Um, and, um, and that means that Jews have a, a kind of built-in confidence and strength in North America that means that they, they can rely on that strength to then be a support, a source of strength for the State of Israel. Um, that, that, that isn't true in other countries. That isn't true in other countries. And um, that's an amazing strength and, in some ways, an amazing weakness of American Jewry. The American Jewry, you know, the, the vulnerability of American Jewry is Dafka to do with its sense of self-confidence. But there's never been a jury that has not thought to itself, I'm in the wrong place, I probably ought to be living in the land of Israel. Um, and uh, I'm not sure American jury has that sense of being in the wrong place. And that's a good thing, in a way, because, because the source of, because Israel needs uh, a, Jew, a, a, a Jewish community in diaspora, um, which is really rooted and really does have 
um, the confidence to say that we have the, uh, the that we're not subject to, in a way to Jewish to non-Jewish authority, and that therefore we have the power to then offer strength to the land of Israel as well. So that's a that's a that's an amazing situation for for Israel to be in. The positive manifestation of that idea in the land of Israel now is that because the Jewish people are free in their own land, um, um, all aspects of the society here are subject to Jewish power. Um, um, the way we run the army is a manifestation of the life of Jewish power and the life of Torah, ultimately. The way we run our health service, the, re the way we run the welfare state, all those aspects of life here um, are aspects of Jewish power. and. Um, and that's a real challenge to us. You know, we can't hide and say that Jewish life is about um, keeping Shabbat and keeping kosher. Um, really, Jewish life here is about, um, there, about whether there are poor people on the streets uh, of Jerusalem. Um, and it's about how we educate our children in the broadest sense. And it's about how we um, run our state. And uh, that's a, a mo both a wonderful manifestation of Jewish power and uh, uh, a scary challenge to the Jewish people. I wanted to wish everybody at home a Chag Sameach, a happy Purim. I hope this class enriches uh, your, uh, your Purim and your season of strength, and I hope you return for the second and third installments of this class. Um, and uh, it really is a special moment when I am able to connect uh, my home to my home here at the Conservative Yeshiva in the Beit Midrash, especially where I've spent the majority of my time uh, and I want to thank you personally first for coming and spending time and also thank you for making us all feel at home uh, here during our year in Israel here in Jerusalem. That's really a pleasure and Chag uh, Sameach to you too and I hope that uh, anyone here who's what anyone who's watching will uh, will feel that uh, not just Israel is the home but the Beit Midrash here at the Conservative Yeshiva is the home. It's an amazing place to sit and learn and uh, you know, it's, an, it's, a, it's a place which uh, we welcome anyone who wants to come and enrich their Jewish lives by sitting and learning Torah with us. So thank you. Thank you. Chag Sameach.